Hello, my friends, this is Eric Parker with One Number Tableau Experts. And in this week's video, we're gonna cover how do you overlay one line graph on top of another, uh, but most importantly, one where your selected period is overlaid on a comparison period. So if you pick October 1st through 14th, that gets overlaid on that same period last year, but you kind of see it uh, plotted against a single axis. And uh, it should be dynamic so that you can kind of stretch it to whatever date range you want. So I've actually got one pre-built. Let's dive into that and, and look at what I'm talking about, and then we'll break down how to build this thing. Um, so here's my default. It's set to the last uh, two weeks. So right now it's uh, September 28th through October 11th. So what you see here, the first point in my uh, line graph is September 28th, 2024. And then my blue line runs all the way through today's date. And then for my gray line, um, it's actually September 28th, 2023. Uh, so last year through today's date last year. And then the beauty of the way that this is built is that I can select any period. Like let's say I go back to July 1st and uh, it looks kind of terrible, but uh, the point remains that like now 8-3-2023 um, is being compared against 8-3-2024, you know, at that same point so that you could hone in on a specific area and see, okay, like where were we better or worse compared to the prior year? All right, uh, so let's dive into how to make one of these sorts of things. Okay, I'm gonna kick off a brand new worksheet and uh, even though I've got some calculations already, uh, I'm gonna pretend that I don't. Uh, so let's start off with our parameters. Uh, you don't have to use parameters for this. I guess you could create like a custom dropdown where you can select like this year, this quarter, this month, and it would auto compare to the prior period. That's a little beyond what we're gonna get into in this video, but we have plenty of videos that do that sort of thing. I'm gonna put some of those into, this, into the description below. Um, so that if you wanna check that out, you can. Uh, but let me go ahead and start by creating a parameter and let's call this our uh, start date. Oops, I'm struggling to type over here. And I've got very similar named fields already, so I'm just gonna throw an asterisk at the end so I can more easily distinguish this. Oh, let me go edit that. I didn't make it a date field. Uh, let me set it to be a date type parameter. And for now, I'll just uh, pick this month. So what I'm gonna do is say the current value will be October 1st, 2024. Now let me just duplicate my start date parameter, right click, duplicate, let's edit our duplicate. And this will become the end date parameter. Uh, and I'll just pick today's date, uh, which is October 11th as I record this. Okay, so let me show those now. So I right click and show the start date parameter, right click and show my end date parameter. Okay. Uh, Quick side note here that I can make these dynamic, like right now, the way I created these, they're not going to dynamically change to like grab today's date or grab two weeks ago, but we have a video on that too. So I'm going to put a link to that in the description below. So if you want to create like a parameterized date, but it's dynamic, so it's always picking the last 14 or 30 days, whatever you want, um, then you can learn about how to do that. Okay. Now, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm gonna create a calculated field which will sort of properly uh, label a date range based on whether or not it's it within those parameters, right? So I could say something like, uh, I'll call this my date period labels. I'm gonna put an asterisk at the end again to distinguish it from the prior calcs I already have. And so what I'll do is I will say, okay, if my order date is greater than or equal to the start date parameter I just created and order date, expand this calculation window so we can see it a little bit better, uh, it's less than or equal to our end date parameter, then that's the selected period. Okay, now the next line needs to be, how would I get it to uh, grab the comparison period? So I will say else if, and we'll calculate some of this stuff on the fly. So let me paste the first line again, except for this time around, instead of this being just the start date parameter, I'm gonna tell it to go backwards one year. So I could say date add, open parentheses, year in single quotes, uh, lowercase singular, minus one to my start date parameter. I'm gonna 
apply that same thing to the end date parameter. Okay, let me just break the then section onto another line because it's getting a little bit cut off. Then comparison, else uh, out of range. Okay, if you're looking at this and you're like, oh my gosh, how am I supposed to remember all this? Uh, <laughs> a couple things. So first of all, um, I'm gonna put a link to, uh, to the blog post in the description. Uh, YouTube's kind of funky. They won't allow me to put characters like carrots in a video description. Uh, so I can't put this exact formula in there, but I'll put a link to this workbook that you can download. And then I'll also put this formula in the blog post on our one number.biz website, uh, which is associated with this video. So you can also just copy and paste this calculation from there if, if you prefer to do that. Um, okay, so what I wanna do really quickly, just to validate so far so good for us, is I'm gonna create a new worksheet. Let me just right click and drag uh, month, day, year. Uh, I, I right click and drag order date to rows and I select month, day, year. And then to make my life easy, let me set my mark type to squares. And let's just get those date period labels I just grab, uh, created and drop those on color. So outer range are all the orange labels, so all that stuff from way back in 2020, that's no surprise. Now, what's the currently selected range? You can see the red section is October 1 through October 11, 2024. And then if I chose the comparison period, it might be a little tricky to actually find this in real time. Oh, I saw it. There it is, October 1 through October 11, 2023. So, so far, so good. This is a, kind of the first step that we need for this all to work. Um, okay. So that's piece number one. Uh, I think we were gonna compare sales. I don't even know if I said that. So let me put sales on my row shelf. And then uh, now we need to create what I would call sort of order date adjusted. Okay. So what I mean by that is I'm gonna create a calculate field and I'm call this order date adjusted. Again, asterisk to distinguish it. So I'll say, okay, if those date period labels say I think I called it selected. <laughs> Hopefully I remembered this correctly. If it's selected, then just give me the order date. That's, uh, that's easy enough. Okay. Else if the date period labels say comparison, uh, then give me the order date plus one year. So I'd say date add year one, to my order date. Uh, and that's it, I guess, I'll just say end. So if it's the selected period, give me those the regular dates. If it's the comparison period, just add one year to whatever the date is. So like October 1st, 2023 would become October 1st, 2024. Okay, and so in a lot of ways, oh, actually, let me just edit that one more time. I don't really need it to be a date and time field. You can see the little date and time. Uh, icon over there. So let me just push this down to another row and I'll wrap this all in the date function to convert it to a just standard date field. Okay, and so I think I was trying to do a daily comparison. So let me put uh, order date adjusted on my column shelf and let me set this to date value day. So currently here's the sales figure. And so what's interesting about this is like, okay, I can see October 1st, 2024 is showing up as $1,193, which is I think technically incorrect, although it will depend because that's actually now adding October 1st, 2023 and October 21st, uh, October 1st, 2024 together. So what I need to do is, is kind of two steps here. Let me put date period labels on color. Okay. And so now I can see that my, um, Selected period is $378 for that day, whereas my comparison period is $815 for that day. And then I have some out of range data, like any data that didn't fall within the ranges that I just made up would be out of range. Um, so let me put date period labels on filters and just get rid of the out of range data. Okay, so now it's time for some formatting. Uh, so what I like to do is sort of make the selected period stand out a little bit. Uh, a lot of ways we could do that. We could pick a brighter color like an orange for the comparison period, maybe like a light gray. So it sort of blends into the background a little bit more. I may need to reorder uh, my color legend. So the comparison, sorry, the selected data sits on top of the comparison. So it's not perfect, but it's looking pretty good. So you can see like, okay, here's October 9th versus October 9th. 
Um, now there's a lot of like little formatting things I like to do from here. So to go back to the original, um, I like to show the actual date on hover over. So like this will show you 9-1-2023, whereas that shows you 9-1-2024. Uh, depending on how into the weeds we want to get, we may want to create some kind of customized uh, labels at the top too. So people know like what are the selected versus prior periods. So, so yeah, we'll dive into all of that here momentarily. But I do just want to do a quick side note, which is that we love to put this kind of content together to help you all out. Um, it very much is inspired by our work with our clients and our classes. Um, so just so you know, we teach Tableau classes probably like every other week. Uh, we've got a couple classes that are on the foundations of Tableau Desktop. We've got a couple that are all about Tableau calculations. We've got one that goes into Tableau prep in detail. So we'd love to have you join for one of those if you're looking to dive deeper. Uh, and then also you can just hire us. So if you're stuck on something and you need like an hour of help, sweet, we do office hours. If you're just kind of like, hey, I think Tableau is cool, but I'm pretty busy and it's maybe not exactly for me, uh, but we need to get stuff done, then you can just hire us to do your Tableau work and we do everything in between. So we'd love to hear from you. Um, please reach out if, if that's the case. Uh, cool. Okay, let's jump back into formatting this thing. So uh, the first piece I'll do is how to get the actual date on here. I think that's actually relatively easy. Um, so let me get my regular order date field and let me right click and drag and drop that on detail and choose MDY for month, day, year. Uh, that didn't go very well. How did I do it here? Um, I guess attribute. Okay, let's try that. So if I hit the drop down and add the attribute aggregation to this, it's happier. And so it should be showing up now on hover over, but I probably need to get rid of the like order date adjusted label because that might be a little bit confusing. So let me click on tooltip in the marks card and just get rid of the order date adjusted. It's a great field to have on our column shelf, but it's just a little confusing um, otherwise. Nice. Okay, so that is that part's done. And then, oh yeah, how do I create like the custom labels? So in order to kind of do the full nine yards on this, like get the individualized dates, we're going to create a calculated field for the uh, start and end dates of the comparison period. Okay. So like, for example, I'll go to my start date parameter, create a calculated field, and I'll call this uh, comparison start date. And then I will say, give me the date add year minus one of the start date parameter. Okay. And then, oh yeah, I need to edit that and make that a date, add the date function around it. So it's a date field, not a date and time field. Uh, not totally necessary, but I just find them a little simpler to work with. We're not using time, so it's a little bit irrelevant. Okay, let me duplicate that and edit this and set this to comparison end date. And then let me change this parameter here. Okay. Now, let me add all of those fields um, to this worksheet, or specifically the comparison start and end date, I suppose. So let me put those on detail. I'll also do the attribute aggregation, just so it doesn't get mad at me. I guess you could probably choose min or max or something like that too, but I think it's fine. Okay, so now let me go to the title. Double click where it says sheet two. And so what I'll say is uh, selected period, uh, yeah, selected period sales um, versus comparison period. Okay, now let's do some formatting. So first of all, the selected period, I'm gonna format that as like an orange um, and then comparison period is gray. So, not because it's already gray technically, but let's try and make it match up with the gray and the chart a little better. Uh, for the selected period, uh, uh, the, the date range, let me insert the parameter start to the insert parameter end date. Okay, I'm gonna make this whole thing a bit smaller. This text doesn't need to be so large. So maybe like kind of bump it down to size nine. That might be too small, we'll, we'll find out later. Uh, comparison start date, let me insert that field here to comparison end date in the parentheses. And let's see how that looks. It's not bad. Um, you know, would I wanna come back and customize this further? We probably could. Uh, I don't know that this is like totally done, but it's in pretty good shape. 
So I'm just trying to think about anything else I would go through as far as customizing it. Honestly, I think we're great. Like I did a little more formatting here, like getting rid of some grid lines. So if you want to, like I could right click and format and let me go to my lines and set the row grid lines to none. So there's some cleanup that you can do there, but I think that overall we're in really good shape. And, and again, as we adjust this, like if I set this to 9-1-2024 now, like it's gonna allow for that comparison across that period. Um, so one top of mind thing I just wanna say as we're coming to the final chapter here is that, you know, I set this up to compare to you know exactly one year ago, but depending on your industry, um, that may or may not be quite the right move for you. Uh, so what I mean is like like I work with some restaurant chains, and part of what they do is they want to compare like you know if today is a Friday, they want to compare this to the same Friday last year, which because of the way calendars work, that's not necessarily and almost for sure not the same day. Like that might be that's probably. 364 days ago, not 365 days ago. So there's a lot of ways that you can customize what I did. Uh, so for example, like in, if I wanted to do that, uh, what I just said there. So, hey, instead of, uh, oh wait, that's the wrong field, hold on. Uh, which would be, D period labels, that's what I mean. Okay, so instead of just saying, hey, like, do a date add year minus one, if I was that restaurant chain and that's how I wanted that to work, I might say, um, you know, uh, if it's a different, if it, you know, date add day minus 364 instead of date add year minus one. So I guess all that to say, there's a lot of ways to customize this. We've, we're not gonna get into all of those right now, but I just don't want you to feel like, oh, well, this is the one and only way to do this. This is meant to provide you a framework that then you can go customize uh, to your needs. So um, thank you for being here. If you have questions after checking this out, please do let us know in the comments. We'd love to help you out with that. Um, and if you have other ideas for things you want to see covered, you can let us know that as well. And we drop new videos like this every week. I mean, they cover all sorts of topics, everything from calculations to dates to Tableau prep to Tableau cloud, like so many different topics. Um, and so hopefully you find some value in this. We'd love to have you subscribe and follow along and we hope to catch you here next week. So thanks so much. And we'll talk to you soon.